During the overture, we see a series of slides, close-ups of the faces of immigrants, old people, children, young people. We can read the expressions of anticipation and hope on their faces. We dissolve to a moving image from the point of view of the people on the boat. We approach the Statue of Liberty. We see Ellis Island in the background. We hear the voice of an immigration official. All right, you goddamn greenhorns, move your asses! There's a loud noise that sounds like a gate slammer. We hear the hum of many voices in many different languages. The din continues as the lights come up, and we are in a processing hall on Ellis Island. There are immigrants, some of them lost, walking around, standing in line. Where do we go? What does this mean? Jacob, where are you, Jacob? The voice from the loudspeaker barks, all persons with numbers 22365 through 22457, report to station 25. This is repeated in Italian, German, and Russian. I lost my sister. I lost my brother. I lost my mother. Is there a toilet in America? Jacob, where are you, Jacob? Another voice. Numbers 32451 through 32678. Report to Physical Examination Part 3. There's repeated in Italian, German, and Russian. The sounds and voices of the hall build to an indistinguishable cacophony. Then there's a sudden stillness. The immigrants freeze. Their backs to the audience. As they look at the Statue of Liberty, after a beat, we see one man strumming a balalaika. Yes, I'm going home. You 
Stage. A doctor tries to catch her. Lady, I gotta examine you. He, she jostles the doctor and picks his pocket. Ferguson yes. sees this. How did you like to be grabbed and, and, and touched? Well, come on, lady, cut it out. I'm just looking for germs. Good. Here's all the germs I brought with me. Nobody touches Mama Lake. I don't have to take this. <laughs> Major fleas of a thousand immigrants make their new home in your underwear. What are you yes, doing? Sir. Is this any way to start out in a new country still? Haven't you heard? America is the land of opportunity. This was my first opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy to appease all these wretched refugees, each with not a penny in his purse.
second floor of the tenement. <laughs> in the kitchen, a wooden table, chairs, a mirror, a gas stove, a cot, and a three-drawer bureau. One drawer is a jar, and it's been made into a bed for the baby. Sadie sweeps the floor as Mamalinka sits at the kitchen table, a long, thin, brown cigar dangling from the corner of her mouth. She <coughs> deals tarot cards and periodically drops her ashes on the floor, which Sadie immediately sweeps up. So, where is he? It's been dark already for hours. Something's happened to you, so I know it. He crosses the street, never looks where he's going. He got knocked down by a cart. He's laying in the gutter. I'm a widow! <laughs> stop it. I'm here one month already. I'm a widow. I said stop Don't it. Don't yell at a widow. <laughs> stop sweeping. You're making me crazy. Leah enters from the bedroom. The baby's all right. He's sleeping. I'm sorry I had to put him on your bed. He just can't fall asleep in that drawer. Could you? <laughs> oh, you think it's crowded now? Wait till my three nephews get here. Nephews? <laughs> How could the king of the gypsies do this to me? <laughs> what nephews? <laughs> that Pascudnik says, since I have a mansion, I should take care of the gypsy princess. <laughs> the cards say they will be here on the 15th. Maybe the 16th. <laughs> uh, don't worry, I'm not keeping you out. They'll stay downstairs with me. Well, we can't pay rent until we get new jobs. Yeah, so not but Sadie cooks and cleans. Sometimes it's too much. <laughs> was you so upset? Everybody was upset, but who could blame them? The place was so filthy, we couldn't breathe the air. And that foreman thought he could have his way with... Well, when someone came and offered us a piece of paradise, we all got excited. Those garment revolutionaries, they're going to do something. You should have seen Yasso. He made a speech. Oh, my Yasso. It was really something. The day started out like usual. Everyone was tired and complaining. The lights go down in the kitchen, and Roshimsky's sweatshop appears. There are bars on the filthy windows. It's hot, dirty, and crowded. Yasso sits at a sewing machine. Nathan, a cutter, works nearby. There are many other workers performing various tasks. Everyone is working quickly and complaining. Ugh, my back! Your back, my feet! Leo, look out the window. Is there a sun shining in America? What's the difference, Max? You'll never see it anyway. America, the land of opportunity. Give me your tired, your poor. Now I know what they mean. We're all tired, tired and we're, we're, we're all poor. Ugh, you greeners. You step off the boat and you think everything is going to be hunky dory yankee doodle den. <laughs> What about you, Yassel? You don't complain. Nathan, Yassel doesn't have time to complain. He's busy working on his invention. Invention? It's a new kind of bobbin. Oh, good, so let me go. You gonna let me see it? It's a self-winding triple bobbin. A what? <laughs> Look, it, it winds itself while you're sewing, and it will sew faster than anything that's ever been. When I get it exactly right, I'm gonna take it to Roshimsky. Roshimsky? Roshimsky? He'll steal it! No, you keep it to yourself, and you open your own shop. Come, everybody look, see what you're shop, 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 shop. Ah, another Thomas Edison right here on the second floor. Oh, it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Roshimsky enters, chewing on a big cigar. What is this? A party over here? Hey, you, Italian, what do you think you're pressing? Grapes? You're pressing tents! Move it! Move it over there! Move all! Watch the stitching! Watch the stitching! Miss Leia, customarily I take lunch in the office, but the weather is so agreeable today. I thought perhaps you'd like to accompany me and sample the delicacies of Mott Street? I am. Uh, I'm very flattered, Mr. Oshimsky, but I brought my lunch from home. Well, I, I just thought uh, Maybe next time. Jack Stern, the foreman, enters. Stern! What the hell do I need a foreman for if I gotta keep an eye on everything myself? I'm sorry, Mr. Yasubsky. I was watching the third floor like you told me. Uh, you always have some kind of excuse. <laughs> it's a good thing you said no. Today is your turn, Mr. Stern. Leave her alone. Why don't you, Why don't you go home to your wife and your kids? Why don't you mind your own business unless you got another job waiting for you? Yes, sir. Please, Mr. Stern, I'm behind on my work and I don't have time for lunch. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Pearl, it's your turn with Stern. Ah, my back! All right, everybody, lunch, ten minutes. 
I'm going to take care of that stern someday. I will teach him a lesson. Yes, so it's all right. <coughs> Look at what a nice lunch she made <coughs> for us. Dooley and Benny enter. They place a soapbox on the floor, and Dooley clangs onto it. My friends, we've come here to bring some hope to your downtrodden hearts. We're asking you to join the union and to let your brothers help you. Uh, he's no brother of mine. I just Dooley, Dooley, let me. My friends, they, as they look upon your tall bone faces, you who represent the backbone of America's economic system, by, by, who is Billy, 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 if a hole opened up on the book street, in town, all the wicked bosses that we ask you this, would you miss them by, by, bitty, 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 bit
Congratulations! I hope the union can find jobs for you. Get out of here, you are all fired! He goes to a telephone. Give me Columbus 357. The workers pack their things and disperse. And you, Mr. Rishimsky, I... Uh, a foreman like you I don't need. Why are you standing there? Go, join the union! Moisha, Rishimsky, send me a foreman and two dozen Hungarians. <laughs> Tell me, Moisha, they speak English? They don't? Good! You <laughs> son of a bitch. This is all your fault. You damn greenhorns are ruined in this country! Miss Leder, look, I'm sorry about all this, but those unions, you don't know. They're dangerous. They're anarchists. But listen, I didn't mean that you should leave. Please, please, stay on. Envoy here. Thank you very much, Mr. Rashinsky, but... I don't think I'd get along with Hungarians. Nathan, will you please sit on me at home? And Nathan? Sorry. <laughs> what? Sorry. The Garden of Eden this wasn't. <laughs> no. Russell, you fix your bobbin, and I'm going to start my own business. This is America! <laughs> For the red thing that you did. Uh, look terrible. I never dreamed we'd all get fired. What you did was right. Turn up. In the long run, they'll be better off. Twenty new members. Which one are you? Bernstein, Feldstein, and Ferguson. <laughs> Ferguson, is it? I knew there was something I liked about you. <laughs> Come to think of it, some of my family was named Ferguson. <laughs> Ferguson's the uncle on the cousin Patrick's side. Come from Limerick. Or Clark, I do recall one hell of a friendly gentleman, a sportsman who did ride in the derby held in Dublin every fall. No, that can't be right. The derby's held in Kildare. Mother <laughs> had a nephew and from Donegal he came. Well, they make the finest meat you'll ever see. He married the boss's daughter, Fergus. That was her name. I remember when they came to visit me. Oh, actually, I think her name was Boyle. I know that somewhere in our past we've met. Exactly where, my friend, I just forget. But sure as the mist comes on, Kalani, sure as me middle name, Miss Blarney, and as lovely as the sweaters made in double and fit. Fergus had a Barnet. Oh, if only we were back in the old country right now. We'd meander to me favorite pop and go away. I'll let the old aromas linger yet. Until the dawn's first light, Fergus and Antony are tight. <laughs> ah. Well, what a jolly meet for Fergus then. It calls for a celebration. And Michael Francis Patrick Dooley is buying. What are you drinking? Uh, a glass of tea. <laughs> what county are you from, Fergus? <laughs> what does everyone want to know from where I'm coming? <laughs> no matter. I can tell you're an Irishman by your smiling eyes. I'm a tailor, I squint. <laughs> Let me ask you something. It matters where I'm from? Hell no. We're just all different shades of green. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess like every Irish heart and daughter, a quality that sets me quite apart. It warms me when me whiskey's laced with water and points me to the nearest Irish heart. Sure as the mist comes on, Kalani, sure as me middle name is Barney.
future. I'll tell you, Sadie, Yasuo is becoming a real American. He's laying in the gutter. He got <laughs> clopped on the head and he's laying in the gutter. <laughs> Nothing happened to him. He probably just needed some time by himself. It's my fault. I, I know how hard it must be to have strangers living with you. Stranger? What stranger? You're no stranger. You're family. And that baby, that baby's like my own. Maybe I should have just stayed in Russia. No! Your husband was gone. You were a widow with a baby. I... I'm a widow. <laughs> I don't even have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly there's a commotion off stage. It's Ferguson staggering up the steps, bumping into trash cans and singing. My heart is wrong. Ferguson staggers in. He holds a baseball bat and two wilted flowers. Ferguson gives Sadie and Mamalenka each a flower and a big sloppy kiss. He has Leah, the baseball bat. <laughs> a gift for my lovely wife. A gift for my lovely landlady. And a gift for my wife's lovely cousin. <laughs> oh my god, I was right. He got hit on the head. <laughs> <laughs> he is drunk. He also doesn't drink. Uh -huh. But Ferguson <laughs> does. <laughs> I would like to introduce my newest and oldest American friend, Mr. Michael Pences. French, Michael <laughs> French. This is Dooley! <laughs> Michael Francis Patrick Dooley, at your service. That's it? You come in here smelling like a Cossack? No explanation, no nothing. What's to explain? This stick? Stick? This is not a stick. This is a baseball bat. Ferguson said you had a son, and I thought this would be a proper gift. It's for Avram. He should learn to be an American boy. That was very nice. Thank you. I think I'll go check on him. Oh, don't be angry with me, my friend. Say hello today. America! <laughs> would you please excuse us? I would like to have a private word with Mr. Columbus. <laughs> In between the baseball and the drinking, did you discover a way for us to eat? You think I was out having a good time? Do be sick of uh, Speaking English, say, you are drunk. <laughs> You're drunk? In both languages? <laughs> Don't you worry, I got my bobbin. Two hands. We'll get money. We'll start our own business. I didn't know what to do. I worried. I thought. I missed you all day. <laughs> Not now. <laughs> Leah will hear. I'll be very, very quiet. He starts to lead her to the cot and stumbles loudly over a chair. Oh, there's such a clutch. On the contrary, I am a very talented man. I can make a cup, I can make a whole dress, I can make a dollar. You could make a big mess. I can make a face, but tonight I must confess. Let me guess. I want to make an American. <laughs> I wouldn't say your contribution so small. 